right, so what I've done now is I've toned my canvas with a um, with a red paint. Uh, this is actually a, like a red acrylic uh, gesso. Um, I learned this technique from a couple of artists. Uh, one of them was Carolyn Jasper, the late Carolyn Jasper. She's the first person that I had ever heard of that did this kind of thing. Um, I've always loved the red background, especially when I've got a lot of green that I'm going to be um, um, painting in my landscape. The other artist that does this is Michael Story. Uh, he's, he's really great. You can learn a lot taking uh, classes from him. What I'm doing is a little different than what he's doing, uh, but that's, he's, he's better at teaching that than I am. So anyway, um, what I wanted to show you is, is um, I actually mixed two reds. I think it was like Cad Red Light and Carmine. Uh, mix these two together and as an experiment the last time because I hate to keep throwing these little sponge brushes away and uh, What I did is I uh, just put it all in a big jar and I sealed the lid really tight and I was just curious to see what was going to happen and uh, Didn't get any mold um, Didn't get the brush stiffening up. I guess because you know, there's just not any more air that can get in this so anyway I was able to use the same brush and so I stuck it back in here. We'll try it again next time. So here is the, um, the the drawing that I did. I just wanted to get a shell outline, and I'm so happy that the building is still standing. It's in Chesterfield County, South Carolina, and um, what I did is to help visualize where everything is and get the proper angles without having to do all of the vanishing points and horizon line stuff. Uh, what I did is I gridded it. Is I drew the exact uh, line splitting the uh, photograph up as I did on the canvas and again this enlarges exactly to this size so I'm able to do that. So what I've done is I just did a pencil sketch outlining the building. Uh, I'm not going to put any other details in. I like doing that as I paint. Uh, I try to keep things simple as I start and then build the details later. So it's going to look like a first grader did it uh, in the early stages and then it'll start you know pulling together and getting a little a little tighter and a little more um, detailed. So anyway, this is how I get started and now I think it's time to start mixing up some paint and get to painting. Alright, I'm almost ready to go. Here's my palette. My normal palette consists of uh, normally like cobalt blue, ultramarine blue. Today I've got cobalt blue, sap green, cad yellow light, yellow ochre, cad red light, alizarin crimson, and then my kind of fun extra colors would be uh, burnt sienna and a color called asphaltum. Um, I use the Gamblin brand. <laughs> you can't really tell by this, but uh, yeah, that really is a Gamblin paint too. Um, and then of course, gotta have white to do some mixing. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so one of the best techniques that I ever learned uh, in painting trees was to actually start with using purple uh, to get in your dark and your medium values in. I know it sounds strange, but trust me, it works. I think I learned that from Carl Blair, uh, I don't know, about 10 or 15 years ago. So what I'm going to do is just kind of go in behind my building. I've done my sketch. I'm going to lay in this purple in all of these dark areas. You see I'm not getting real prissy with my brush strokes. You don't have to be all perfectionist right here. You just want to lay these colors down. And that right there, that's an erase line. That's why that's still dark line is still there. Just want to get this this color down so I can get onto the fun stuff. Basically what I'm doing is just negative space painting behind this, um, behind this building. One of the things that I learned several years ago was uh, Holding the paintbrush, as you see when I started out, I was holding it pencil style. 
it's really a much better idea to hold your paintbrush like this. It, it allows you to, um, to make more consistent brush strokes. Um, they're more painterly when you hold the brush like this. I find myself being more deliberate when I make my brush strokes uh, holding my paintbrush out here because at this stage all I'm doing is getting my canvas covered, getting some basic colors and values in, and then we'll start pulling in details and whatnot. So I'm going to go ahead and finish laying in all of these, these darks in here and then we'll come back after I've got this filled in, but you get the general idea. I don't want to put you to sleep here. is uh, painting this uh, building called uh, Eden's Grocery and I've got the purple blocked in so now what I'm going to do without cleaning my brush I'm going to come over here and get some sap green and start creating this middle to dark value here working the sap green into the, uh, the purple get that nice warm feeling create some great dark green shadows and again, this is a technique that I learned from uh, Carl Blair. I think he came to Sumter or Camden or something like that many years ago. So what, again, what I'm doing, I'm working the sap green into the purple. Probably can't tell a big difference in them, but what will happen is I'll get this worked in, and then I'll start taking this, just the plain sap, working it outward a little bit more give an area that we'll start adding some yellow and blue to to create these even lighter highlights right here. Let me just go ahead and do that. So I've got some uh, red, yellow, light, cobalt blue. I can come in here and see right above that second notch there in the building. Start working some of that in. If you lay the brush stroke down and leave it alone, you'll have a nice bright area, but if you keep working over it like this, you'll create these middle values. So I want to do a little bit of that. And I probably need to dry wipe my brush. A little bit of that purple out of my bristles, and then I'm going to come back over here, take some cad yellow light, a little cobalt blue, and I'll come back in here and start Enhancing that color a little bit more. Do a little crisscross stroke with my brush. See it's starting to get a little bit lighter and as we go outward and we're not you know, touching that, that purple color. Again, lay the brush stroke down, leave it alone. Right in here, this is why I had put the sap green into the purple, so it's going to still pick up some of that, that dark green in there. You gotta stop and dry wipe the brush. Right, what I think I'll do is go ahead and set this back over here. Again, mixing a little bit of blue and yellow. Let's go back and do my sap green because I didn't really get any sap green worked in in this section, so I'll go ahead and that done. Again, trying to hold my paintbrush towards the edge. I'm trying to make more painterly brush strokes. So probably what I'm going to do is stop the video for a few minutes and uh, just paint this using the, uh, the fast motion on it and uh, get this tree area knocked out and then we'll come back. I've 
got most of the uh, the trees kind of blocked in. There's still some more highlighting and stuff I need to do, but I wanted to get a little bit of the sky in my picture. So we're going to do a little paint mixing now. Well, we were, except I set my palette knife down and I can't find it. Oh, All right, found the palette knife. What I want to do is just paint mix to get these colors up in here. I've got cobalt blue. I also have a color called horizon blue. Kind of a pretty light blue. So I'm going to just take a little cobalt and horizon, mix those together, and see how close I get to the sky color up there. That's a little bit darker than it needs to be, so I'm going to add some white, lighten that up. Generally what you want to do is you're mixing the paint is every time you add a color and you've mixed it, you need to stop, hold your palette knife up to the photo to see if you are getting you know, close to it. This is uh, a little warmer than what's up there. It almost feels like it needs a little bit of red. So I'm going to add a tiny, tiny dot of alizarin crimson into that. As Joyce Hall would say, there's never enough red in a painting. It almost has like a lavender feel to it as I'm mixing this paint here. A lot closer than I thought it was going to be. So I'm going to add some more blue. I can already tell that it's not light enough, so add some more cobalt, a little more white. Just paint all in one spot. And let's try mixing that again. feel like it's maybe just a shade too dark, so I'm just going to go one more little glob of white into that. I'm going to go with it because I kind of like that color. Now it is going to get a little bit lighter as it comes down closer to the horizon. I don't know that we're going to be able to see a whole lot of that, but follow the protocol. I'm going to go ahead and mix a slightly lighter version of this for the lower areas. knife off up here to conscientious of my, my paint, not be wasteful. Now this paint brush that I was using earlier, purples and greens, it's still fairly dirty, even though I cleaned it in my mineral spirits. Let me try one more cleaning here. Dry wipe it really nicely. Now one of the things that I talk about a lot is brush care. When you're cleaning your brush, don't don't like twist it around in the paper towel. Pinch the pinch the brush. You're, whenever you're making brush strokes, you want to make your brush strokes so that you're keeping a nice point on your brush. Same when you're cleaning your brush, same when you're lifting paint off of your palette. You, you just want to do a motion that keeps your, your paint brush in a point. It keeps your brushes lasting a, a long time. Um, this brush here, this is a uh, Creative Mark from Jerry's Artorama. Uh, it's a bristle brush, a uh, round bristle brush. Probably my favorite set of uh, brushes. So what I'm going to do now is come up here, start in the darkest part of the sky, which is the upper area, and then get lighter as it goes down. Now as I'm laying this, this paint down, I have to be mindful of all of that green right there. So that means I've probably already got some green in my brush, and now I'm going to dry wipe my brush, get it back into my paint. So much fun watching this color lay down on the canvas. Let the pictures start to come to life. Dry wipe my brush again. Have a little more of my sky. This is where it gets really tricky. This is like that 
game from back in the 60s, Operation. We got to keep a little short stroke. Don't want to hit the edges because if you do, just like an operation, the little thing would light up and you would lose. In this case, you would have paint getting into your brush and you would lose. You've got to, you have to stop and wipe your brush. So lay the brush stroke down, leave it alone. Dry wipe the brush, get some more paint. have to be patient and stop and dry wipe because if you don't you're just going to get a gray mist. I was really tempted to go a couple more strokes. It's like oh look at all this blue paint I have here and oh no don't do it. Don't be tempted. Wipe the brush. Lay it down. Leave it alone. Again holding my brush like this so I make deliberate strokes. the brush down, leave it alone, dry wipe it, find another sky hole right there, right there. Dry wipe. Again, this is where it gets the tricky part. You can lay the brush stroke down. Leave it alone. Man, you saw me try to cheat there. Not gonna do it. Let's see, right up in here. Dry wipe, wipe some more paint. And I do realize that there's a lot of little, little blue areas here. We can always come back to that. What I call revisit it. We will revisit that area. If you notice, well, maybe you didn't notice, I don't know. Uh, I have blue painter's tape all the way around the outside edge of the, uh, edges of this. I can't afford to frame every single piece of artwork that I do, but um, whenever I take my artwork to a show, if there's somebody that might be interested in it, if I've got these edges really nice looking, it, the painting's a little more attractive. You know, if I can't afford to frame it, I at least want the edges to look nice by either painting all the way around the edges, which I hate doing because I end up getting messy, messier than what I already am. So what I'll do is put the blue tape around the edges and after the painting dries, then I pull the tape off and I've got nice white edges and it just, it just looks professional. Okay, I'm gonna dry wipe my brush. Now as I'm starting to get in here, let's go to that lighter value. Notice all of my little vine charcoal marks that I made earlier to guide me through the perspective drawing process. It's easy to just paint right over them. Some of this area right here is actually going to be more of the light green color. You know, some of them are going to be painting sky holes and all of that. But what I've done is I, by cutting into all of these shapes, I'm like, oh, look at that. I've started to create the shape of this tree right over here. <clears throat> and all I was doing was focusing on deliberate brush strokes as I was uh, painting my sky. And I like what I'm seeing so far. I'm starting to get there. I think right in here, I do need a little bit more blue in there. So let me go back to, I'd already dry wipe my brush. I'm gonna go and put some of that darker blue in through here. 
you see I've laid right over that green paint and no problem but if I kept painting over it well let me just show you if I lay that brush stroke down and then I keep going over it you can see what happens that area I didn't even get any green in it for my my shadow area earlier So I think that's it for the moment. Um, I'm going to come back and start. Now that I've got my sky, I feel like I can better see uh, where I want to put more highlights of the, uh, of the leaves in here. Um, you know, you know what, before I do that, I just as I was talking, I noticed I probably need to get some sky holes just in this tree here. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty sparse. I mean, compared to this this denser area over here, so go ahead and get some sky in there as well. Okay, all right, I'm good playing. We'll stop for now, and I'll come back. All right, I'm about to finish up for today and um, put my stuff away. One last thing that I'll do is just take a, a soft fan brush and basically just run the brush along, very lightly along the, uh, the painting uh, brush strokes and do what we call knocking down the paint a little. I think I learned that term from Paul McCormick. Um, you just want to get rid of those lines that you don't want to see later on. But I really don't want to have to sand this painting because I've got too many brush strokes. I do like some texture in my trees, but I don't want this much texture. So I'm just going to just do a quick few strokes over each little area here. And I don't want to overdo it, but I do want to knock down the, the brush strokes. You can kind of look at it to the side with the light and see areas where you need to come back and knock it down a little bit. And I'm gonna grab a different brush for my sky just because it's a much lighter paint. And I did stop and dry wipe my brush, so what I want to do now, grab some clean paper towel or tissue, just come in here and mop it. And whenever I, this brush goes into that green area, I've got to stop and wipe it, or else I'll get a muddy mess. Stop it and wipe it. I was going to continue on with this painting today. If it wasn't so late in the day, I wouldn't have to do this stuff. I would be doing a lot of blending uh, with my brushes as I started to develop more of the light areas. So for now, this gets it uh, nice and toned down. And I'll be ready to paint again tomorrow. So until next time, keep painting.